Welcome to Taking the Higher Road, a Driver Reach and Freight Waves production. I'm your host, Jeremy Raymer, founder and CEO of Driver Reach, a modern recruiting and compliance software solution. On this show, I interview industry experts and thought leaders who bring their insights to the driver lifecycle as we discuss the industry's greatest challenges, driver recruiting, retention, and compliance. I appreciate all the positive feedback on the show. Please remember to rate and review Taking the Higher Road, whatever platform you use to listen. This week, I'm thrilled to have a close friend as well as a Driver Reach customer, Amanda Glidewell, Recruiting Manager at Grondike Transport. Amanda joins us today with over a decade of experience in the trucking and recruiting space, and is just an all-around great person to work with. Uh, so glad to have you on the show, Amanda. It's about time. Thank you. I'm happy to finally be able to join you. <laughs> well, I'm excited to get into all things recruiting, but uh, I also want to make sure we learn about Amanda. You know, get into your background, how you got into trucking, learn mm-hmm. about Grondike, and and hear, and hear how you've been, uh, you know, you're thriving in this uh, otherwise challenging environment. And perhaps you can share some secrets of what's working, what you've learned the past year or so. And of course, I want to make sure we have time for a question from a listener during our Deeper Dive segment. Does that all work for you? Sounds like a plan to me. Fantastic. All right. Well, before we dive in, as is the custom, uh, I'm curious if you have any book recommendations for the audience, anything recent you've read that was impactful to you? Yeah, I think the most impactful one that I've read so far is, I'm still in the middle of it, so I'm still learning the impacts. Um, It is Simon Sinek's Start With Why. Um, It really gives us an idea of where we're starting from and why we do the things we do and finding that passion within um, to continue to do this job that um, I think most of us fall in love with very quickly, but it can also be challenging at times too. And finding that why is a really important piece of what we do. Yeah, that's a that's a really Simon uh, Sinek has several books that I've read, and that it was uh, I think kind of the one that started it off for me, and that's a that's a great mm-hmm. great one. So for any of those who ha- aren't familiar with it, whether you buy the actual book or listen to it on uh, Audible or anything like that, I think that's a it's a really good one. It gets you pretty fired up. So uh, so good suggestion. So let's talk about Amanda. Okay, share you know a little bit about your background, your interests, you know, what led you to the trucking industry? Yeah. So I spent probably about four to five years in the staffing agency world before I actually got into transportation. I had done everything from outside sales to bring in new customers. We were staffing for a large food production company. Um, so food line workers and things of that nature. And I very quickly got the recruiting bug in that space, but it's a very different type of recruiting than what we do as driver recruiters and in, in, in the in the transportation field. Um, we, I did a lot of branch manager type of stuff, and then that office was closing, and so that got me involved with Ground Bike Transport, where I took a HR generalist role, which wasn't in the recruiting space, but it got me in the door. Um, in the transportation space, and I've I've been with Grand Bike ever since. That was June 30th of 2014. So later this week, nine years with the same company. Uh, I spent some time in the HR role, and then very quickly figured out that I loved driver recruiting and and moving the country forward, and and finding those people that fit in those trucks and and those types of things. And the rest is history. Here I am now. So. Well, that's awesome. So I didn't know the staffing part of your mm-hmm. background. And yeah. that's something that we have in common. Although my staffing was specific to the truck trucking industry, right. specifically to driver, re, you know, driver staffing, mm-hmm. CDL driver staffing, but still like that, the, the staffing industry is a, uh, it's a whole nother world, but it's yeah. so important. It touches every industry. It does. Um, so, um, well, that's exciting. And, uh, and uh, that nine years. That's yeah. Fantastic. So congratulations. Yeah. That's thank you. That's appreciate that, it. That, that takes uh, that takes people that really understand the why. Yes, right it does. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, for those listening who might be unfamiliar, can you share about Grandike? You know, maybe yeah. the company's history, what the company's all about, that sort of. Yeah. Thing. So Grandike is coming up in July on our 91st year in business. We haul bulk liquid hazardous products, so chemicals, caustics, acids, refined fuels, depending on the market that we're in. We have about 40 locations nationwide, ranging mostly in that I-10 corridor down in that chemical alley, southern Texas, Louisiana, Florida, and then a little bit up the East Coast. Um, And then we do have some locations up into the mountain ranges, so Riverton, Denver, Colorado Springs, Pueblo, somewhere around in there. And then we also go as far west as Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona, where we do quite a bit of refined fuel stuff over there. 
um, 30 locations, um, at almost 900 divers. I think this last week we were at like 870 something. So we're pushing towards, we're growing, we're growing fast. Uh, one of our main core values is growth and we're constantly looking to look at our efficiencies and make those changes that we need to make to make sure that we're growing well into the future. Um, Let's see, what else can I tell you about Grondike? There's so many different things. Still family owned and operated, so the Grondike family is still very heavily involved in what we do day in and day out. Um, and it's it's just overall a great place to work. They value the people that work for them and value the impact that we can all make to the industry as a whole. And uh, you mentioned hazmat and tanker uh, outfits. So very active, I know, in the NTTC, the National yes. Tank Truck uh, Carriers Group. So yeah. Eight-time award winner for their National Safety Award. Um, we're very proud of that. We know that we're the only time eight-time high winner, and so we're very, very proud of that aspect. Safety is also another one of our core values. If it's not safe, it's not getting done. So <laughs> we're very, very proud of that. Well, and when you're hauling hazmat <laughs> materials, all that's a good thing, right? Thank you right. for that being a core value. Yes, yes. Um, yes. And, you know, that's been something, it's been a topic of conversation a lot lately, whether it's in podcast conversations mm -hmm. or in webinars, content, it's all safety and compliance is so important. And yeah. as you know, recruiting and compliance go hand in hand. So yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious if you could maybe share on a, like on a day-to-day -day basis, what would you say is, you know, maybe your biggest challenge as, as a recruiting manager? I think it is really, let me think for a second. It is really about the making sure that that driver understands why we do the things that we do them and that not everybody, not every carrier is going to do it the same way. Uh, we have 90 years of history. We have 90 years of practice makes perfect, right? So our policies and procedures are from that 90 year history that just shows that if you do it the right way, it's going to, going to be safe. Um, I would say really making sure finding we're finding drivers that fit within that mold, um, minimal accidents and incidents, things of that nature, to make sure that they fall within what Ron Mike is expecting of them. It's not an easy job to do, and it's not for everybody. We know not everybody is for Ron Mike, and Ron Mike is not for everybody, and that's okay. Um, obviously, we want to grow. We want to continue to do better, and we're always looking to improve on the inefficiencies that we may have. We're not afraid of those. We continue to look forward and and make the changes needed to be able to proceed forward and continue to be the safest carrier in the industry. Well, a couple of things that I, I took away from that. One is making sure that you're hiring the right types of driver and, mm -hmm. and that they understand why. This is this, another reference <laughs> to the why, right? Yeah. yeah. And then um, making sure, I mean, A, 90 years of history is great, especially yeah. when it's history of, of growth and improvement. Because it process building and refining, right? But you, but you're not afraid to embrace technology. You're not afraid to, and in fact, you do embrace it. You you mm -hmm. talked about you know whittling away inefficiencies and, and things yeah. like that. Can you, you know, how how do you approach technology and, and automation in the recruiting process? Can you share a little bit about that? What we do is we we really focus on making sure we have the right vendors in place, whether it's that background screening company and making sure that they are honing the same values that we hone every day, um, our applicant tracking systems, or the systems we use internally to track candidates from an interview standpoint and those types of things. We really make sure that those vendor relationships are strong and they're candid and they're clear, they're transparent, they know what we expect as their customer, but also what they need from us is their customer as well to make sure that they're moving forward in the right direction as well. We're also not afraid to say when a vendor isn't working anymore, we're not afraid to say, you know what, this we're outgrowing this and we need to find something different. That doesn't mean we don't like that vendor, whatever the case may be, but we're not afraid to say, you know what, this just isn't the right fit anymore, or maybe it's not the right fit yet. Um, you know, it took a long time for us to get on with driver reach. It took multiple phone calls because it just wasn't there yet. But the second that it was, it was, okay, let's do this. Let's move forward. And we're not afraid to have those tough conversations with our vendors whenever it's not the right situation. 
um, and continuing to find the ones that do fit within what we want to do and how we want to do things. Well, what's exciting, you you mentioned, I think, in a recent conversation uh, that uh, you felt like you had the right vendors in place. And, mm-hmm. and I, I was going to tell you, I'm, I'm seeing and hearing more uh, of that, you know, obviously through the driver reach lens, but, but you know, customers who have some of the right integrations in place, you know, yeah. enabling them to leverage maybe the the best in class solutions in the industry versus mm-hmm. just this one size fits all that can, you know, right. maybe, you know, jack of all trades, master of none sort of uh, scenario. And, and that technology allows for that because mm-hmm. especially via API connectivity, when there are we kind of, you mentioned having that, the same maybe philosophy or, you know, mindset, right. same core values, those sorts of things where you can find vendors that are like that and that they all can work together and partner together. Yeah. That's that best in class uh, solution. And I'm hearing more and more of that. So that that's encouraging. Technology makes it easier, even though there are different companies, it makes it seem very uh, seamless and cohesive. Correct. Yeah, I would say um, we are in a very good situation right now. We've switched a couple of vendors around recently even, and we just had our biggest hiring month in over probably a decade um, in the month of May of this year. And a lot of that is contributed to we have the right vendors in place to get us where we want to go. And they're just as candid with us as we are with them. And that that relationship piece is such an important factor, especially from the recruiting end. But I know I can probably speak for some of my colleagues that it's just as important on the safety end or, or the operations end or anything of that nature as well. Yeah. And you say relationship and that you know, while that's important, it's it's partnership too, right? right? I mean, that's kind of to your point. Uh, yeah. So I know, you know, we're challenging times right now, right? There's a lot of companies that are, if they are already embracing technology, they're certainly maybe taking their foot off the gas a little bit mm-hmm. or, or if they're not embracing technology, they're wait for it, wait for it because they're not in a huge rush to, to embrace, even though the argument and the ROI is you're going to heck, you're going to get a heck of a lot more efficient, mm-hmm. a lot more thorough, consistent process and so on. But it's just this fear. Maybe some, some companies, that when and when adopting new technologies, you know, there's a bit of hesitancy or right. reluctance to embrace new software or install a new process. Um, that doesn't seem like it's been something that's been a challenge for Grondike, but do you have any experience with that and and how have you overcome it if so? Yeah. So we probably about three years ago, we actually centralized our entire recruiting department where we we took some of the pressure off of our field managers um, having to do all the recruiting and, and all of that and put that on a truly from start to finish recruiting department. And that was probably one of the biggest challenges. I hate to say it like this, but COVID was kind of a blessing in that sense because we didn't actually do that until we were coming out of COVID. Um, Late 2020 is when that started to happen. And it was the perfect timing for us to make that change simply because we had been doing a whole lot of hiring for the months leading up to it. And it was just the right timing to kind of pull that away, let them focus on the people that they have in their terminals and the drivers that we have to make sure that they're taking care, being taken care of. And then let us work on this other thing over here. And uh, COVID just happened to be the blessing that happened. And it was, it was a challenge for sure. Cause it was a whole shift in how we do what we were doing from the recruiting standpoint. It was a complete shift. It was a challenge internally for sure. But that's when we made the switch to driver reach too, is whenever we were coming out of COVID. And it was it was the perfect timing to make that switch that we wanted to make. Um, but we just weren't quite sure when the right time was going to be. And it just kind of all lined up perfectly. So while, yes, there were some internal challenges with that, the external challenges were less because we were coming out of the, the height of COVID. Right. Well, that makes sense. And I mean, if you're going to go all in, go all in and like... <laughs> You, you you embrace change. You embrace yes. you know the the disruption that comes with it. But it's because you know that on the other side right. of it, that's going to be better. Yeah, and, well, uh, and you know change is actually another one of our core values. We always I say it all the time. Um, if we're not changing, we're not growing. And so we're constantly looking at where are inefficiencies. How do we get better? And how do we continue to grow by change? So we're definitely not scared of changing to make sure that we're growing well into the future. And I hear I hear the Eminem song. I'm not afraid. That's like in my head right now as you say that. We'll have to maybe maybe we can pump that in. Uh, 
So, so uh, can you speak maybe to any unique or innovative strategies? Again, I, if if you're able to share some, <laughs> that, that, you know, that you're using to stand out because it is while while it's not as challenging as it was from a recruiting standpoint, you know, nine months a year ago or so, right? It's still it, it's still a dynamic where there are a lot of companies like if, it, either they're trying to grow or they're trying to replace right. some of the maybe underperforming drivers that they have. So there's still challenge in trying to hire drivers. What any anything that's you know some strategies that that have helped you stand out? I would say, without giving too much away, obviously, um, I would say don't be afraid to think outside the box. Um, the way we've always done it is not necessarily the way that's going to work for the future. Um, so don't be afraid to really take a hard line look at inefficiencies in your processes and things of that nature and think completely outside the box. Um, centralizing our recruiting functions was not something that came easy. It was not, it was something we had been talking about for a very long time, but just weren't ready to do it yet. And then finally one day we said, you know what, we're just going to pull the plug and we're going to try it. We're going to see what happens. And if it doesn't work, we're going to go on to the next thing. Um, don't be afraid to stick your neck out and say, let's try this. It might not work. Don't be scared of that. Um, but be brave and and don't don't sit back and just let the chips fall where they may. Go out and find those chips and stick them where you want them. <laughs> well, it sounds like fail fast, right? You'll right. be like, hey, if it doesn't work, that's okay. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll go back. But, you know, yeah. that's kind of how I felt when I moved from Southern California to Indiana. And yeah. Like, and I said, look, if I don't like it, I'll turn, I'll go back, yep. you know, but there's no looking back. It's been 20 years now and I love this. I love the industry and, yeah. and, uh, and I wouldn't want to do anything else. That's so. kind of where I'm at too. I've been in, I've been with Grand Ive, like I said, nine years and I don't see myself doing anything ever again, anything else ever again, just because there's a bigger impact there. My why is I'm helping in some small way move the country forward. And that is, that is yep. my why, what I do with what I do every day. Yeah. And that's, that's grounded that that's hard to shake. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's so, that's so genuine and yeah. um, purpose, purposeful. Yeah. So this might be a good opportunity to get into our, uh, our deeper dive question. Um, uh, this is a question from one of our listeners. The, the question is, we seem to get a fair number of drivers applying, but the ability to connect with most of them is very difficult. Any suggestions on how we can improve that? Find out what they're looking for. Ask them, why are you leaving your employer? And stay focused on your pitch from there. If it's equipment, stay focused on what you can improve from their previous experiences. Get on their level. Understand who they are as a person. I think the most rewarding hires that I have had as a recruiter and then watching my recruiters do this day in and day out, the most rewarding ones are the ones that still call me to this day. Amanda, what are you doing? When are you coming down here again? Those And that's because we built a strong connection based on something that they told me in that very first phone call. It starts with the very first ring. And if you're not ready to listen to what they're looking for, you've already lost, in my opinion. So I think really listening to what they're, they're looking for and why they're leaving their employers and what are those challenges, finding those underlying challenger, challenges. All drivers are going to say pay. It, we all know that's going to be something that they're all going to say. Um, but what is it? What is that core thing that they're looking for? Is it consistency, lack of communication, those types of things, and really diving in deep to what they're looking for? That's going to get those people every single time. So, all right, perfect. Well, good answer there. And hopefully uh, the, the person who submitted that question is listening and <laughs> is taking some notes and says, okay, so basically have some better conversations, make sure yeah. that, that, that it's geared towards what matters to them and, mm -hmm. and make sure that it's a good fit and yeah, um, and be human, be empathetic. Correct. That's the big thing is just be human. They're humans too. They have lives, they have families. They know, they know that they're going through challenging times and we're there to support them in some way, shape or form and hopefully give them a job to where they can build their life up even better. So. So you've been very, uh, Grondike has been very active in the industry. You yeah. have as well. Uh, you, you attend events, uh, yeah. you know, every year. Uh, any? Will you be attending any upcoming uh, events this year? Yeah. So myself and one of my recruiters will actually be in Kansas City the first week in August for CDL Life. We're looking forward to that one. Um, and then I will also be in Dallas in November for Women in Trucking with another one of my recruiters. So um, that'll be a good time as well. 
Yeah, two two great industry yeah. events, and uh, and for those who haven't attended either of those, I think you a you should yes uh, certainly certainly um, a plug for for both CDL Life's event in Kansas City and Women in Trucking's event in Dallas. Those are what a great opportunity. There's such good content mm-hmm. and great rapport, relationships, networking, all of the above. That as big as this industry is, it's so close yeah. and and so tight, and relationships that you build and foster will last a lifetime. So yep. uh, that's exciting. I look forward to seeing you then uh, yes. at both of those. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to spend some time with you. Finally. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for joining. Uh, I'm grateful for our relationship and uh, I really appreciate your passion and your why. <laughs> well, thanks, Jeremy. I'm so happy that I was finally able to get on with you. And thanks for joining me for another episode of Taking the Higher Road and for spreading the word to your industry peers. We really appreciate it. And remember, you could submit any questions or comments, including those which may appear on upcoming Deeper Dive segments at podcast at driverreach.com. And don't forget to rate and review Taking the Higher Road, whatever platform you use to listen. Until next time, thank you for taking the higher road.